This episode is sponsored by BQE Software and was recorded via Facebook Live on June 14th. David and I interview BQE founder and CEO Shafat Kazi, who then gives us a demo of BQE Core, a cloud-based solution that offers integrated accounting, project management, and business intelligence designed specifically with professional services firms in mind. It's a little hard to picture the demo without a visual, but even if you don't listen to the full demo, be sure to skip to around the 43-minute mark. That's when Shafat gives us a preview of Core Intelligence, BQE's new AI-powered voice assistant. If you're going to Scaling New Heights, you can try out Core Intelligence for yourself at BQE's Booth 64. To get notified of future Facebook Live episodes, like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash cloudaccountingpodcast. Welcome to the Cloud Accounting Podcast Facebook Live bonus episode. I'm Blake Oliver. And I'm David Leary. And today's guest is Shafat Kazi. Did I get that right, Shafat? Yes, you did. Perfect. I did. Yes. Uh, it's amazing. You are the CEO at BQE Software, and you're here to give us a demo of your newest product, BQE Core, and a sneak preview of the newest feature, Core Intelligence. So thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you, Blake. And thank you, David. We have been working very hard for this day, and I'm really super excited to show you Core Intelligence. And actually, uh, a lot of people don't even know about Core, so we're kind of going to show them a little bit of Core also as a part of the demo. Yeah, this is a a big learning day for me because I'm new to this. Uh, David, I think you got a little bit of housekeeping first. Yeah, just some housekeeping. Uh, For those of you that are uh, on the Facebook Live feed, please use the comments there to ask any questions. And Blake and I will get to those before the hour is up. For those of you that are listening after the fact, hopefully uh, Blake and I will be good at um, describing what we see on the screen along the way. And uh, the good news is a lot of what uh, Shabbat's going to show us today is audio. So you'll be able to hear uh, some of the amazing technologies. Uh That's great. Yeah. So just a reminder, Shafat, we take the audio from the Facebook Live and we post it up on the Cloud Accounting Podcast. So as you are demonstrating, kind of narrate along, it's helpful. And David and I will interject if we need to as well to make it clear to the listeners. Wonderful. I will do that. That's a good idea to extract the audio and post it as a podcast. So I'll keep that in mind. So we had some questions first, right? Yeah. So so I think I'd... uh would like to learn a little bit about Shafat. Like, how'd you get here? What's your background in the accounting industry? What's BQE software? And we'll go from there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love to tell my story. And David, you and me have talked at Intuit. Blake, um, I have not had an opportunity to exchange my story with you. So <laughs> in LA, you guys should hang out occasionally. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, really? Absolutely. Where, where are you based in LA? We are in Torrance, California, oh, okay. not too far from where you are. I'm in so, Encino, so uh, in some ways we might as well be on opposite ends of the country. But <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, LAX is the exit, so uh, yes, yeah. we're on the either side of LAX. Yeah. Um, so uh, BQE Software has been in business for 20 years. We uh, started with a product which I wrote in my garage uh, about 20 years ago called Bill Quick. It was uh, initially designed as a time billing application, and and it it really got received really well by professional service firms. And just so that you know, in you know, my background, I I have a master's in engineering. I ran my structural engineering firm in California for eight years, and also was very strong in computer programming. I knew close to forty programming languages, and was very passionate about making a difference. And, and And as a young um, entrepreneur, I was also chairing a committee at a national level called Computer Applications Committee. And this is before the days of Internet. Sorry, you know, I I, I am old. And and that's when we came up with the idea about uh, we need to make transformation to the businesses and, and automate their time capture and billing process. And, and I wrote Bill Quick 1.0 in my garage uh, back in 1995, released it in 1996. Um, it, it's been very successful ever since we started in, an, in a, literally in an attic, about 180 square feet, 200 square feet space. Today, we occupy over 40,000 square feet of space, 230 employees, wow. offices worldwide. And that product from the garage has grown to 
become a real significant company. It's making a difference in hundreds of thousands of people's lives. And, and uh, that's the backstory. Now, mm-hmm. uh, fast forward, and this is where it gets really interesting. Fast forward, 2011, 2012, the world believed that, uh, that because, because Steve Jobs told us so, that the world's going to run uh, it through apps. So we are going to have these one-trick ponies that are going to do these tricks for us. So we're going to have an app for expenses. We're going to have an app for timesheet. We're going to app for travel. Um, and that's how we're going to run our life. And businesses started kind of going around that line and, and trying to put the apps. And we uh, integrated our apps with QuickBooks and other products. But we saw a frustration among our customers in terms of where the digital plumbing between the apps was not really working. And the cost of ownership was, you know, becoming a concern. So they were paying us 25 bucks a month. They were paying QuickBooks 30 bucks a month. And before you know it, it was $150, $200 a month. So that's when I came up with the idea. I said, okay, we got to come in with this really one product, kind of a mini ERP system, full 360 degrees that covers the core functionalities of a business. And then for the one-off functionalities, that's not necessarily something you do on a day in and day out. It's okay to integrate and have APIs and allow apps integrate and build that ecosystem. So that's back when 2012, we started building Core. And we started with 50 employees uh, that were working on Core. Towards the end of the product life cycle, development life cycle, there were over 100 people working full-time on this product. It took us five years to build this groundbreaking product. Everything in this product was built ground up with the latest and the greatest technology. And we were looking forward to 2025, 2030 and building the product for future, not for past. And this so, is, so this is like, so instead of trying to migrate your desktop product from before to the cloud, you did a full blown rewrite. Absolutely. Start from we, scratch. We, we took the 20 years, at that point, 15 years of experience of the domain, which is our domain, by the way, is professional services. And by professional services, you know, I'll, I'll cover that in my presentation when I do the demo. It's a very big domain. So we, we had the expertise and we had learned over 15 years what works and what doesn't work. So we said, okay, if we were given one more chance, how would we write this, rewrite this product? And that's where Core came in with mobile first tremendous amount of uh, built-in capabilities of machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, and and other features that are, we believe, are going to be very important for businesses such as cloud feeds, bank feeds, credit card feeds, uh, real-time reconciliation, and and things like that. So, Core was released uh, in July uh, of 2017, uh, July 19th, as a matter of fact, second birthday. Yes. And it um, and here's something that I did that that's really amazing and uh, and kind of gutsy in a way. I made a decision about a year and a half before Core was going to get released that the day we release Core, we're going to stop selling BillQuick, ArchiOffice, Engineer Office, Web Suite, BillQuick Online, ArchiOffice Line. So we had six products that we were selling at that point. I said that on July 19th we will stop selling new logos or to new logos, we'll stop selling the desktop product and the other products that we had. So so just to make sure I'm hearing you correctly on this, this would be like Intuit, as soon as QuickBooks Online came out saying, we will never sell QuickBooks desktop again. Exactly. That's what you did with your company. Exactly. Wow, it's wow. a lot of courage. That's a super gutsy move. Yeah, it were, is. You, were you worried? I, I was actually... Um, um, uh, being pressured a lot by my own management team and board saying, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, Let's have a six yeah. month transition period. And the whole concept there was that if I didn't put all my bets on this product, then I am putting doubt in my belief in this beautiful product that I built ground up that I know is superior as an engineering terms in terms of UI, UX, every aspect of this product is significantly more advanced than anything I had ever seen before or anybody had ever seen before. So here's here's an interesting thing you would want to hear. I did my spreadsheets and projection models and everything. And in my spreadsheets, I was predicting by March of 2018, which is approximately eight, nine months down the road, the sales of core would exceed the combined sales of the sixth product that I was turning off. 
And to my pleasant surprise, in November of 2017, only four months from the day I launched the product, core sales started exceeding the combined sales of Billquick, Archie Office, Engineer Office, Web Suite, Billquick Online, and Archie Office Online, and Engineer Office. So all of these products combined were making less money than what Core made in November. And since then, it's obviously going through a hyper growth. We are just loving this phase of our company. And and, and to make it even more sweeter, the, some of the features that we could not release back in July because we just wanted the V1 to be you know the minimum and and now we're releasing core intelligence next week and you guys are the ones that are going to get actually one of the first public preview of core intelligence and breaking and news. Breaking yes, news <laughs> exactly so so super excited about where we are as a company as a stage of the company yeah that's really exciting really gusty uh, gutsy i should say and um amazing uh, maybe into it should take a page out of your playbook Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Into it actually uh, should, and I, I, I have to say that QuickBooks Online is far more better than it was a few years ago. Absolutely, good time for them to completely pull the plug on no new subscriptions on QuickBooks uh, desktop. So, can somebody use BQE Core for everything, and they don't have to use QuickBooks? Absolutely, they can. Absolutely, they can. As a matter of fact. If you are in professional services, you are better off using core for everything. But at the same time, um, we do understand that there are sometimes reasons why you may not want to let go QuickBooks or Zero, or for that reason, you know, uh, account right in Australia, the ones that we integrate with. Uh, and that's why we integrate with them seamlessly so that you could make keep them as your GL and use core for your time tracking, project management, project accounting, and other functionalities that are critical for your business. But, but you built a GL into BQE Cure, but if I'm understanding correctly, you had a GL before in your old product as well. So it's not like there's something new for you to build in a GL. True. And, and so that, you know, David, um, we don't necessarily, we didn't think of it as a GL. We, uh, one of the things that core does really well is DCAA compliance. And this is essential for government contractors. So, and also the professional services that we deal with primarily architects and engineers and IT consultants and business consultants, they are extremely driven by projects. So project accounting is a critical aspect of their day-to-day business management. Uh, so they, they look at it as a project as a profit center by itself. So profit and loss by project is important for them. So okay. core, you can do that. So it's it's a lot more advanced than what you would see in Zero or QuickBooks uh, in terms of allowing people to have that PNL by project and rewarding their project managers, and kind of converting their project managers into business managers and tying their bonuses and things like that to the success of the project financially. And so uh, it sounds like you would, uh, in a way, uh, this is a niche app. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's professional services, nothing else. We would, if, if somebody from manufacturing or retail would call us, uh, we would send them to uh, Intuit or Zero. Another product. Cool. Uh, I didn't have any other like, kind of introduction questions. I think we have a good concept of what you're going to possibly show us. Uh, we could jump in the demo and let's play yeah. anything else. No, I'd love to see the product. So what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about BQE. And of course, some of it got answered, so I'll just not repeat, but there are a few things and, in the slide that are new. And this is a slide deck? It is a slide deck, okay. yes. We, so we so really have that words, if you get this to us, we can get this into the show notes. Wonderful. But if not, if you're listening to the audio, you can always jump in on the Facebook Live and view the uh, slide deck there as well. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes, yes. Please jump into Facebook Live because I'm going to also demo core. So that part is not a slide deck. So that's more like a you know live video. You'll have to watch that. So real quick, uh, for those of you who don't know about BQE, this uh, is a um, few months ago update on the employee count. We have offices in Australia, India, USA, and uh, we're, we're you know, worldwide we're 216. As a matter of fact, today we're 230 employees and we're predicting to be 400 employee by this time next year uh, based on the hyper growth that I mentioned earlier that Core is experiencing. We are extremely well rated in terms of uh, by, by our employees and the rest our customers. As a matter of fact, BQE got named as Inc. Magazine's one of the best places to work for 2019. 
And I'm I'm honored also that I was rated as among the top 50 CEOs in USA by Comparability, uh, which then published that in USA Today. Uh, so that happened in December. Um, those of you who know us uh, from Bill Quick, that was really when we set the seed. I believe it was my laboratory to build the real tree, which is core, uh, that I actually gathered all the knowledge uh, from all these products over the years and uh, the hundreds and thousands of customers that drew the innovation uh, that really led to core for us. And, and obviously, you know, that is the product. So I, I also talked about five years of development. We spent a lot of money and a lot of resources on building core from 2012 all the way down to 2000 and. 17 when we released it and and we actually announced it in a bigger way on October 30th 2017 at our uh, BQE succeed user conference in Vegas uh, core is uh, as I was telling Blake core is a a full 360 degree surround sound from time and expense tracking, project management, account receivable and billing, project accounting, which you know um, is is a little more than GL. Uh, we also have scheduling, workflow, accounts payable, document management, human resource management that's out in beta right now. It's scheduled to be released publicly on July 17th. And coming this year um, is, is core AI, core payroll, and core CRM. Uh, so um, three amazing and big launches are and, coming out. This, this is your payroll product. It's not somebody else's integrated in like an add-on or this is like you're building a payroll product as well. Absolutely. Yes. So okay. we have been working on it for years and we didn't release it with release one. We want to make sure all the T's were crossed and I's were dotted. So we're hoping that we will get US uh, payroll out this year and then next year we'll go Canada and Australia. And previously so, in your desktop world, you had um, a bunch of separate products. Mm-hmm. Are any of these modules that you just had on the previous slide, like, are you going to sell payroll as a separate product, standalone, the CRM as a standalone, or is just like, hey, you're either in core or you're not in core? So, uh, so yes, you, you could sign up for core HR to do your human resource management of your business, you know, from hiring your employees to firing your employees to managing their benefits. You could also do the same for core CRM or core payroll. Um, but there is some level of some other piece needed. So for example, you don't need necessarily a time and expense piece for, for let's say CRM, but you would probably need a basic management license so that you can enter your employees and things like that. So there is some pieces that you would still need and it's a subscription-based a la carte system. But yes, you could technically buy just core CRM and nothing else and or core payroll only. So just sell that part only and not have to need to buy the rest of the application. Absolutely. So so we built this with, with the uh, pure APIs. Everything was done with APIs. It took us two and a half years to build some of the most modern and fastest API you'll ever see that that are uh, that meet all the industry standards. And our goal was really to integrate with everything, all the way down to to Tesla uh, or <laughs> or your you know iWatch um, or Apple Watch or whatever you may have. We were agnostic to the device. We were agnostic to the location. We wanted this to be truly an application that's API driven. Uh, and all the business logic is handled at our server. And we also wanted to be agnostic. We didn't want to really force people to be using our pieces that we were rolling out because core, we saw this as a platform, not as a product. So right out of the box, we started integrating with Google Drive, Dropbox, OneDrive, QuickBooks, you know, uh, MyOps, uh, AccountRide, Zero, uh, Microsoft Office uh, 365, and a few other things. And we're now rolling out ADP integration and um, Salesforce, Microsoft. Right? So, so that's a good example of how agnostic we are. We're rolling out on our own payroll, but also rolling out integration with ADP because we understand there are some businesses that may not be able to move their payroll to us. But so, we want to minimize the double entry. Yes, Blake. Shafat, this is this is uh, so nice to hear. As somebody who has been preaching the gospel of cloud accounting and the ecosystem, and I'm sure David feels the same way, most of the time when we talk to software developers or providers of like ERP systems, which basically it seems like um, you've you're, you've got an ERP here. At a, at a, at, do you consider um, you know BQE to be an ERP? 
Well, the word ERP for small and medium businesses, which is our yeah. focus, is kind of uh, not commonly used. It's kind of a bad word, but right? We, yeah. <laughs> it's scary because it costs so much when people right. think of ERP. But technically, yes, we're bringing the ERP functionality, which only top you know, Fortune 500 firms were privy or, or privileged to have, would bring in that down to small and medium businesses right. at a very affordable price. And at the same time, would also focused on making sure that they never enter data twice. So essentially, you know, whatever they're doing, um, we try to keep it, you know, integrated, fully integrated with with uh, all the products that they might be using. So, so uh, what I was trying to get at is that when I, when I look at the integrations available with most ERPs, they're kind of, they're, they limit the integrations because they want to own as much of the data as they can, right? So they'll only allow integrations with products that don't, you know, threaten them or, or right. Like, but you, you were a plug and play in that um, somebody can use core for everything, but the GL and then integrate at zero or a QuickBooks for the GL. That is correct. Or they could use core for the GL and time and billing and projects and then integrate a payroll provider. So it's, it's really like modular in that sense. Is, am I Absolutely. getting that right? Absolutely. Okay. And you only pay for the pieces you use per user. So it's not like even you have to buy the all pieces for all users within a company. So if you have 20 employees and 15 of them just need timesheet and expense sheet. You buy only time and expense subscription for them and you pay under 10 bucks for them per user. But you as an owner might need, you know, project management and billing. So you would pay additional 20 bucks or whatever that might be for your piece of subscription. Yeah, that's really, really neat pricing. I lo- that's such a cool thing. Well, great. So, so two innovations that we did, and that, that was, by the way, Blake, that was another thing I had a lot of friction on from, from a lot of people. They wanted one pricing, twenty four ninety five for everybody or $30. And, you know, right. so I was like, no, you know, that, you know, think of a firm where 18, 15, 16 people just need to capture time. You know, right. why are they paying 30 bucks for those guys? It just well, does not. You're forced, make- you're forced to, right? Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not user friendly. It's, well, uh, <laughs> and, and, and it's not competitive because then right. what we were competing with was a $10 timesheet software, right? So, and we were, lo- they were losing the benefits of having all of that in one place. And, and right. that was important right. for us. Okay, so continuing on with my, um, with my uh, slide deck here. Um, BQE market, I mentioned earlier that we have a significantly large market. As you can see, we focus on professional service firms. This is from U.S. Department of Commerce as of uh, last year, actually 2017. 1.2 million professional service firms, 9 million Americans are employed by professional service firms. $1.76 trillion are um, spent by them. That's the revenue, I mean, of these firms. And you can see the breakdown, by the way. Um, this is this is really amazing. Look at accounting, $175 billion revenue on accounting firms, 130,000 accounting firms. There are more accounting firms than architectural engineering firms combined. Uh, legal firms, 185,000. Um, so we, we are definitely low lawyers, we meaning the country, not BQE. We don't have that much concentration in law firms yet. We're mostly focused on accounting, architectural engineering, and we do really well with management consulting. So at the end of the day, that's where we shine. That's where we're focused on making their lives better and building the product that is vertical, understands their language, and understands their uh, need for the businesses. So one of the things we do is uh, we... We ask the user when they sign up for a trial or sign up buy the product is what industry are you in? As soon as they tell us what industry they're in, we change the product's configuration files and everything else so that the lexicon and the terminology matches their, their business style. As an example, for, for an architect, it's, an, it's a client and a project. For, an, for a law firm, it's a client and a matter. For an accountant, it's a client and engagement. So we rename the project to matter if you say you're from a law firm or we'll rename it to engagement if you say I'm an accounting firm. And even like trust fund accounting, as an example, will show up only if you said you were in the legal industry. But if you're in the engineering industry, that feature is not made visible 
to the end user. Mm-hmm. So, so the whole point being that, you know, we're, we're right for your business. We understand how your business works because we have experts that ran these type of businesses and they have worked with us over the years to make this platform uh, perfectly fit your business. Key differences, I'm going to skip that slide because you're going to see the product uh, very soon. I'm going to get right into the demo, show you this uh, dream product that I have. And and since Blake is seeing it for the first time, I'm guessing, David, you're seeing it for the first time too. I would love to get your honest feedback, despite the fact we're live. Uh, if you don't like anything, say it. Uh, so here you go. Well, I will say, I think I saw Bill Quick many years ago. Yes. Well, but I'm sure that, it has changed. Yeah, a yeah lot it, has, from it has changed significantly. Yeah. So, so I'm logging well, into in the cloud now. I mean, yeah, right yeah. There to start with that. Oh, it's not just that. It's a completely different. I mean, I could go on for hours to tell you how under the hood it's significantly oh, yeah. better. So, I'm logging into Core here. Uh, this is just my web app. As you can see, as soon as I log in. What you see here is my, um, you know, welcome screen or my dashboard. Um, And I want to kind of give you an orientation on the product first real quickly. Everything is on the left now. As you can see, we we deliberately put most of the functionalities on the left navigator. And I'm logged in as the owner of the company. I have full subscription to everything. So I'm seeing everything in there. So you can see under my contacts, I have my employees, I have my vendors, I have my clients. And if you're wondering what this plus symbol is right next to that, that's if you want to add a new employee, you click on that plus, it launches you into the create employee mode rather than dropping you in the employee list. Um, Right below the contacts, we have various uh, lists. Uh, Activity items are like service items. Expense items are more like charge items. Then we have custom fields. We have many other lists that you manage through the list screen. Of course, project is the epicenter of uh, of core because we are based at the end of the day, project-based system. And we do project accounting. This is where you would set up uh, project requirements. I'm logged in into a sample <clears throat> engineering company. So the last three features you see at the bottom there um, are more in, you know, engineering specific or architectural specific. Okay. So you have projects, you assign people to the project, you start allocating time and um, money towards the project, you develop your budgets. From budgets, you build estimates for your clients, you build your fee schedules. Fee schedules are more like rate cards. We know that nobody builds the, all the clients at the same rate. And and that's where you control that. And uh, as I said, the last three features are not, um, you know, they're industry specific. Under time and expense, we have multiple interfaces from time card to time entries to timers and expense entries, reviewers. We have a PTO tracking and we have a overtime calculator that handles pretty much all 50 states. Uh, under billing, you would do your invoices, statements, you know, receive payments on invoices, send a retainer invoice to your client, issue a credit memo, uh, do invoice collection. We have a really nice collection system. You know, you'd be surprised. Professional service industry is one of those industries. And I personally experienced that when I was running my own firm for eight years. Your clients don't pay you on time. You have to literally beg them to pay you. I don't know why. And I was always telling them, I said, why is it, you know, I, was, I would tell my clients, why is it on the phone that I am feeling like, you know, you're doing me a favor uh, by paying me something I did for you. And I already paid my employees for that service that they provided. Um, anyway, we have that. So ch- under accounting, David, this is, this is kind of okay. the GL side. You can see chart of account, full register, your deposit, Bank feeds, we since renamed it to cloud feeds, we now actually handle both um, credit cards and, and bank feeds and automatic reconciliation and rule-based um, checks, funds transfer, of course, general general and recurring checks. And then under payables, we handle from purchase orders to bill payment, vendor credits, and you know uh, recurring bills. So if you have that rent mm-hmm. bill that comes in every month, uh, and then we have some productivity tools that are important. Now, Uh, We have a very powerful report center and then any menu item, any screen, you can make that favorite. That way it will appear under your favorite. So one of the things I wanted to show you is the utility icons in the upper right corner. So if I zoom into that, you can see, you know, of course, that's my health, but but there are a few more like my calendar. So we have a built-in calendar where you can schedule office meetings and and uh, track time against that for all the people that participated in that meeting. We also have uh, we also have. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, alerts. You can see the little bell for alerts. So I can see what my alerts are and take action on those. And, and then, of course, we have built-in messaging system where you can leave uh, event-specific messaging, like give this message to Shafat when he does billing, that kind of stuff. So and, your messaging system, is it just uh, employee to employees internally? Or can I, if I was an accountant, could I use that to communicate with my clients? No, you, well, it, it is, it is, you're right. It is employee to employee only, okay. uh, but we are planning to roll it out that if you have multiple company files, then you could send to anyone within those company files, which means that if you're an accountant, and you're managing 20 employees, uh, you could really, sorry, 20 clients, you could send that email or message to 20 clients. Awesome. Um, so timer right here, you know, you can run unlimited amount of timers in core. You can jump from one timer to another timer. I have three timers uh, scheduled to run. I click on a play button on any of them or I can add a brand new timer uh, from there. So these are these are always at the top. We refer to them as utility icons. And to the left of the utility icon is my company menu, where I have my, you know, my profile, my user preferences under my settings. You can see I have my company profile, global settings. Of course, core is a permission-driven application, so all the permissions uh, and a few other things. We also do multiple currencies, so it's a currency manager. This is where you would add a subscription and add users. And then if you had multiple companies, this is where you could switch from one company to another company. And then last but not the least, we have a Google style search. So you're trying to pull up something on a client. You just type in client's name and that comes in. Now, are you searching the whole database? Is it? Exactly. Exactly. So I can search for anything in, in BQE core. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the nice. beauty is that we wanted to uh, pull up. Now, it is still security driven, so it knows who you are and what permissions you have. So it won't show you anything that you're not supposed to see. Makes sense. Got it. So on the dashboards, we have unlimited dashboards. You, you know, I have two dashboards here, my management dashboard and my personal dashboard. So you can add as many dashboards as you want. You can share them. And these widgets on the dashboards, you know, have their own heartbeat. They refresh on their own. And you can have, you know, uh, multiple widgets uh, with multiple filters. So, for example, this is my last 12 months income widget. Uh, to the right of that, I see what my expenses have been so far this year. And then I have kept my income expense graph in there. Um, and of course, you know, you see that little, little control there. I can, you know, I'm looking at the last 12 months, but I can change that and have another widget that just looks at this quarter. Um, and uh, account receivable, project performance, my earned value. Uh, the point being is that uh, we wanted to inform the user, depending on what your permissions are, uh, about the KPIs that mean a lot to you and you need to keep your fingers on that pulse. And so, so I think a lot of apps just have like a, a dashboard. Like if I just heard you correctly, like each employee of your company could have their own dashboard on what yes. they need to worry about. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and okay. if I create a dashboard for, let's say, the all the managers, I can share that with the managers. So, so no need to twice create a same dashboard. Okay. So you've shown us a ton of modules, features, menu items. Um, and we've also discussed how your pricing is unique in that it is modular. So how much of this do I get in the base module? So basically, um, the pricing on on core is a la carte. So what that means is there is no base module per se. So there, it is it is role driven. Okay. Okay. So for example, if you buy time and expense, what you will get is a timesheet, and you'll get expense sheet, and you'll get the PTO tracking in time and expense for as little as seven ninety five a month. Uh, if you buy three year subscription, nine ninety five a month. If you buy one year subscription, now. There are certain features that everybody gets automatically, okay? Whether or not, you know, you, you don't have to pay for that. So if you get time and expense module of subscription, you get certain common features. By common features, I mean, for example, workflow. So you get the workflow, your ability to track, you get the dashboard, you know, to track and to do your own dashboard widgets and everything else. So there are certain common features that everybody gets. But again, if... If, if you hire a bookkeeper and you want to give that bookkeeper an access to the GL, then you pay, you know, twenty four ninety five for your or twenty nine ninety five. I'm not quite sure exactly what the price is. I think it's twenty 
four ninety five for the GL. So yep. that bookkeeper just needs that much. That bookkeeper does not need time and expense because bookkeeper is not tracking time. So it does not need the uh-huh. project management. So it's a piece by piece. Each person pays right. their own piece. Got it. All right. Wonderful. So let's let's show you a little bit more. Uh, considering the time, I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. Yeah, right. um, I think we want to see, uh, see core intelligence. Like get yes. the, preview, the, the, the promised preview, never before seen. This yes, we yes. See. Well, before we get to core intelligence, okay. I want to show you business intelligence. Now, one of the differentiators in core is that we believe that we, uh, we, we help businesses make more money by making them aware of what works and what doesn't work and keeping that information at their fingertips. Um, so as an example, I'll show you the, my employee screen. So I go to my employee list on this application and here's my list of my employees. I'm logged in as Scott Jackson. So let me click on Scott Jackson. As you can see, now I see the details of Scott Jackson, a very open interface, a lot of white space, but Take your eyes to the upper right where it says performance. When I click on the performance for Scott Jackson, this is where I want to wow the world and the customers. Instantly, we will bring in the KPIs that people could not even imagine getting it at at any moment. They would literally have to hire Blake and pay him a lot of money once a year, maybe if they could afford it, to get things like what is the ideal pay rate for Scott Jackson. You're, you're making a lot of assumptions about my ability as a financial analyst, but I'll, I'll let you, I'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> well, what I meant is they would hire a CPA no. yes. and, and have to get that done. Yeah. So things like you know minimum bill rate, um, effective bill rate, uh, even for that reason, basic things like utilization, cost rate, uh, all of those factors that we know matter. As you scroll down, you can see we bring in tremendous amount of business intelligence literally at fingertips, and you can run it for any date range you want. So I'm seeing utilization, margin, realization over time and a nice, really intuitive dashboard. Correct. That's really cool. So here's my client list now, and I'm going to go drill into my top client there, Arclight Theaters, and go to the performance on that client. And now I'm going to get my KPIs for the client. As you can see, if I wanted to filter it by this year, you know, let's say this year to date, I can do that and get my KPIs instantly showing me that I'm making 62% profit with this client. I'm 35% complete on my contract and client has paid 92% of their bills as of today. And my total hours are 1,669. Uh, Everything that I've done on this client is billable. Two hours are non-billable. So pretty much 100% billable. And my work in progress, which means that if I want to invoice this client today, I could invoice another $70,000 approximately there. So, so yes. Like, so do you support uh, different types of billing? So let's say I'm billing a fixed fee for the project, right? Um, or I'm not billing on an hourly basis. Can I can I bill the fixed fee and track my hours against that just for internal reporting, that sort of thing? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's very common. Uh, you would have both value billing as well as fixed fee billing or even recurring billing or even a combination thereof. We actually have a contract type in core where you can have what we call as fixed plus hourly. So, hey, I'll do your payroll for $800 a month, but any consulting work you give me, that will be hourly, right? So we have even that kind of scenario as well handled in core. So, um, so yes, uh, absolutely. All of that is, uh, is in core. Now you can see billability analysis, your earned value, your margins. And we show you margins both on build as well as, you know, uh, billable time and expense. And you can see margins dime, down to each expense that you have incurred on that particular uh, client. Now, Time tracking, of course, this is where we started. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I just want to show you that we believe that one of the main reasons people don't want to track their time is because you ask them to track time and it's it's full of friction. Yeah. Uh, too many, too many steps. So we made our timesheet uh, very simple. We were actually inspired by Google Sheets where it was saving the information automatically on its own. So that's exactly what we did. We use artificial intelligence to pre-fill your timesheet. So you can see as I logged into my timesheet, it's pre-filled. It knows what I'm supposed to work on and uses tremendous amount of artificial intelligence to try to figure that out. And that's the first wow the employees have 
when they see their timesheet, already knows what jobs they're supposed to be working on and what activities. And then all they have to do is punch in their hours. Like I can put eight hours on Monday and eight hours on Tuesday, so on and so forth. As I do so, notice that I'm not saving. It says save successfully. It's saving in the background, low friction. You're done literally in minutes. Same concept on your mobile phone. So you could really easily capture your time on the mobile phone. So nothing else is needed. If you want to put a detailed memo on one of the time entries, say something like, you know, I worked on design specifications. Very easy to do that by just simply adding that memo to the time entry. And everything is saved automatically for you. So no, nothing else needed. And then if you want auto submit, we also have an auto submit feature or you can manually submit it. This is another view of the time entry, more like an Excel spreadsheet. And you can see here the same 40 hours that I just entered in the week view. Um, and I can drill into details, same note that I entered in the other one. Uh, and of course, here I have capability into a lot more attributes to That's that time cool. entry that I did not have on that simplified view. Um, let's see, what else do I want to show you? Uh, let's see, I want to go ahead and show you timers. Well, timers, you know, it's it's very simple, straightforward. So in lieu of time, <clears throat> let's just show you a couple things on the reports real quick. Very powerful report center, 200 plus reports organized into these groups. You can expand any group. Let's expand aging. You have each report with a detailed description of what the report's about. You click on aging report. You have filters. You can remove the filters, add filters. Um, so let's just remove that filter. And you also have options. You can say, uh, group my group my invoices by client or group my invoices by job or by um, you know date or whatever. So once you hit that continue button, uh, the report pops up on your screen literally instantly. And, and we allow you to you know either memorize it or uh, or make it favorite. So here I'm on page two uh, of the report. If I want to go to the last page, of course, we always will show you a grand total of what people owe you. And and now if you want to run it every week, you can easily memorize that or you, know, you want to email it to someone as a PDF or Excel, all built into our reporting engine. So you don't have to necessarily do anything extra for that. Um, one of my favorite features on the reporting uh, platform is that we allow you to schedule report. And David, this is this is something that nobody has yet, as far as I know. I don't think Intuit has it too or, or anybody else. So any report that you see in our library, including a custom report that you might add, you can just click on that schedule option and say schedule this report and have it delivered to anyone. And here, David, to answer your question, anyone, anybody's email address, your accountant, yeah, so you want to send your, you know, payment or cash flow uh, or, or uh, invoices paid report or anything, or you know, project status report to your project managers. You schedule it. It's one of those set it and forget it deal. And sure enough, they can't later on complain saying, I didn't know the project was running out of budget because you're giving them that updated project spent report uh, every Monday morning. Or you want to send something to your accountant or even your client. If you want to remind clients of past two invoices, you can send the past two invoice report to each client automatically. So, Shafat, before you jump into the kind of your next uh, demo here, I, I just to check on time. So, anybody has any questions, please definitely um, ask in the comments. And then, actually, you know, make an observation here that I don't think it's going to come across in the um, audio. Uh, this is all running in the cloud, and it's just shockingly fast. Yes. So uh, I, I, I would love, other, yes. I mean, I'm not using it. I'm just watching you. Right. Yes. But my gut, it feels faster than most other cloud-based apps I've seen or used, especially when it's refreshing a report, pulling up data, drawing a graph. I'm kind of surprised how quickly it's going. I encourage you to use it. Um, that was one of the five mantras that we had written when we started. We we didn't want to see the hourglass. That was one of them. You'd be surprised one of the one of the mantras was also that allow people to use it without mouse. So um, so the point being that we know many of our customers heavily use keyboard for data entry. And we wanted them to be able to jump from one, one row to another row in their GL or time entry screen or whatever without the mouse. Uh, mouse was a friction for them. They would be there for days if they were using mouse. So there is a lot of great things in core. And one of them that we're really, really proud of is 
um, is our speed. Uh, we monitor our core APIs in real time every minute. And if any of the API takes more than 400 milliseconds to respond, which is our benchmark maximum response time, we will go ahead and raise a red flag and engineers are alerted. Uh, and, and that's been that way and and uh, and people that use core do tell us that to say wow this is by far faster than my desktop application okay the the real highlight of today's uh, event is my core intelligence i want to give you a little background i am a big believer in voice being a low friction input method there are new methods of input that help popped up in the last 10 years from your camera to your uh, um, to your touch to your uh, microphone to your altimeter to your um, motion you sensors two episodes ago right three episodes yeah. ago with the uh, google reservation thing google duplex there you go. yes google duplex, google duplex is is an amazing tool where you know it uses voice and this so what we did is we have been studying the uh, natural language processors and the deep neural network combined with the simplified algorithms for machine learning and the training, uh, the less work required to train the AI or train the machines to learn. Uh, and we've been working on API specific to voice and, and not, and we, we really wanted this particular um, a piece of our application to be more like your business analyst or your business partner. We didn't want to say, hey, you know what, you can say, uh, you know, make a time entry uh, or start a timer. That's no big deal. We wanted somebody that I can ask any question about my business and it would give me an intelligent answer, kind of that data that we all remember from uh, uh, Star Wars, um, who knew everything. Uh, so, so that's what core intelligence is. And this is in beta. It's coming out in a week. Um, and you will see the announcement soon. Our customers are enjoying it today. Uh, many beta testers have been using it. So let's, um, uh, let's try to see if we can um, um, go ahead and show you a couple of things here. So I'm going to actually switch my screen just to bring another uh, area of core. So bear with me a second here. So um, so what I wanted to show you is is a conversation mode. Um, basically, me asking questions and and nothing here is is rehearsed. So. Please bear with me. So let's just start with employee. I'm going to go back to what I showed you earlier, which is employee Scott Jackson, and I'm going to show you the performance tab on Scott Jackson. So let's see if it works. Um, okay, Google, um, talk to core intelligence. By the way, I'm, I'm using a standard Google Home on my desk, and everybody has uh, either that or Alexa now. So let's see if it works. Okay, Google, talk to core intelligence. Sure. Let's get the test version of core intelligence. Hi, Scott Jackson. You rang. Yeah. What's the um, what's the ideal pay rate for Scott Jackson? The ideal pay rate for Scott is sixty nine dollars per hour. Any other questions? Yeah. What about his uh, effective bill rate? The effective bill rate for Scott is $163 per hour. Wow. Is there anything else I can help you with? How about his uh, utilization? The utilization rate is 89% with 2,652 billable hours and 10 non-billable hours. Scott has 185 overhead hours and 146 paid time off hours. Anything else? Yeah, can you um, can you tell me who's my best client? ArcLight Theaters is ranked number one among eleven clients with one hundred sixty-one percent profit, which amounts to. The audio just cut out yeah, for me. We lost the audio. Oh, there he's back. Janet DeMarco is ranked number one among 40 employees with an effective bill rate of $186 per hour. 
Anything oh, else? Hey, Shafat, we lost you for like one or two seconds. Would you mind just going back and showing yes. us the show? Um, so I ask, I ask her, uh, who's my best client? Arclight Theaters is ranked number one among 11 clients with 161% profit, which amounts to $274,899. What else would you like to know? How much does uh, Arclight Theaters owe me? Client or project? Client. Did you mean Arclight Theaters? Yes. The client is at 76% completed with $950,000 contracted and $717,811 used. There is a balance of $232,189. What else can I help you with? Hey, uh, what's on my um, to-do list for today? You have one thing on your to-do list, interview with one and only David Leary of Cloud Accounting Podcast. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, yeah, what's on my uh, to-do list for next week? You have nothing on your to-do list for next week. Would oh, are you, you taking a vacation? Your upcoming tasks? Yes. You have no upcoming tasks. By the way, you are running late on the following to dose. Meeting oh. with stakeholders to assist in developing the scope, schedule, and budget. Okay. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, no, thank you. So one thing I wanted to show you, David, you asked for it, <clears throat> which was, can it do, you know, these were on analytical and read-only uh, operations. Can it do right? So we're uh, deploying the right part of it. So I, I just want to show you how I can create like a quick to do for, for, you know, meeting with, let's say Blake next week. So mm -hmm. let's try that. Uh, talk to core intelligence. Core intelligence isn't responding right now. Oh. Try again soon. Um, the hazards of live demos. Talk to uh, core intelligence. Okay. Getting the test version of core intelligence. There we go. Hey, Scott Jackson, got a question? Yeah, can you create a to-do for me? Why not? What should I call it? A meeting with uh, David and Blake next week at Scaling New Heights. Okay, got it. Your to-do task will be named as meeting with David and Blake next week at Scaling New Heights. Do you want this task for client, employee, or project? Employee. Great. Could you please help me with the employee name? Scott Jackson. Let's watch this. A to-do has been created for employee Scott Jackson with name meeting with David and Blake next week at Scaling New Heights and is active now. In so case you need to modify this to-do, you can always update it via core mobile app. Anything else? Uh, no, thank you. Goodbye. So oh, notice there notice it is. This, uh, meeting with David and Blake next week yep. um, at Scaling New Heights. So right there on the dashboard for everybody yeah. to see. Instantly. Yes. That, so well, wow. all right. Goodbye. Thank you. Did so sixteen oh four. Oh, high school. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> She's out. Okay. Great. So what do you guys think? Well, I have to say, Shafat, we've been attending QuickBooks Connect for a number of years now, and I keep seeing demos of an artificially intelligent um, assistant for QuickBooks that has not, to my knowledge, yet been released, and you have done it. You, I, I mean, you've done it, done it for, for BQE Core. And I've seen it in lots of hackathons, like demo yeah. ones. People would build a proof of concept in a weekend, and then that would be it, right? And it, doesn't, it just goes away. What I think is interesting about you having a voice assistant in Core is... I, I, I had a good feeling that there's a lot of solo architects, engineers, people out there that either A, don't have a secretary, they don't have an assistant, they don't have a staff. And so they could really utilize a voice bot, or be it a Google Home or an Alexa at their desk and really add to do's, find out when their next meeting is, get some data before their next phone call. It's very, very helpful for that role. Yeah, when I was working in public accounting, 
my timesheet was the bane of my existence. And I would love, I mean, I can imagine you're going to allow people to create time entries this way, yes, right? Like absolutely. I would use that all day long. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But also think about these use cases. You know, I have a review with my employee. I didn't get time to review his performance sheets and I just got a call. I'm running late. I'm asking my device on my desk to update me about that employee mm -hmm. uh, while I'm finishing up the email. Uh, think about it this way. You, public accounting, you know, we're talking about accountants who have clients. Can you imagine your client dialing in and punching his code and having a conversation with a business analyst like this one about their business? Can I pay my bills? You know, do I have enough cash? What's my forecast? What should I be watching for? Mm -hmm. All those kinds of things. It's so, so what you saw at Hackathon, David, was more like, uh, let's have voice as a method of input. What we're doing here is completely different. We're taking advantage of the deep neural network, machine learning to an extent that, of course, you know, no matter which language, which way you ask that question, it will intelligently extract the intent and then utilize the entire data that it has to present the best answer. Uh, and you, I don't know if you noticed it, but two, two interesting things that it did. One was context. When I said, you know, what's the ideal pay rate for Scott? It gave me the ideal pay rate. Then I said, what's his effective bill rate? I didn't say Scott at that time. It knew which context I was yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Good point. The other thing that it did is I said, you know, what's on my to-do for today? And it said, you got this on, you know, or you got nothing for today, next week. By the way, you are late on such and such to-do. So it's saying, okay, if Shifa's interested in knowing what he has on his to-do, maybe I should tell him about a to-do that he was, was due yesterday and he hasn't submitted that yet. So, so that... Oh, by the way, you know, if you, you have mm -hmm. a meeting with such and such client, if you leave now, you're going to be there in 30 minutes. It's very important to humanize the artificial intelligence so we feel comfortable with it. Got it. So it's not just about inputting data. It's about extracting insights and uh, in context and giving you contextual information. And I, I really, I noticed that with um, when you asked, what's my most profitable client? It wanted to know by project, if you were, if you were interested in the project, or, or the client, client exactly, exactly, yeah. exactly. That was smart. Exactly. Really neat. Cool. So uh, obviously this is a preview. I know you, you mentioned you're going to Scaling New Heights. So if people yes. track you down or go to the core booth at Scaling New Heights, can they play with this? Can they ask? Uh, does it have a name? Is it Corey? Like, or is it just... You know, we, we submitted, we, we, we actually liked Corey. Uh, we submitted Corey. Google rejected that oh, yeah. because they want something that is unique. And so far, we're calling it Core Intelligence. Core Intelligence, we will have Core Intelligence to play with at Booth 64 at the Scaling New Heights. Um, I'm actually doing a main stage on Sunday at 4 p.m. Uh, at, at the Scaling New Heights. So I'm actually, you know, one of the guys that kicks off the, the conference, then please do come to our booth 64 and we love you to ask all kinds of questions. And she can also tell jokes, by the way. And uh, so it's the whole point is a, a, you want an assistant on your desk for basic business related questions or even complex business related questions. And you know that you got the right answer. So that allows you to make that right decision all the time, every time. So you're not issuing a raise to an employee because, because you like that employee. You're issuing a raise to an employee because you now have the data that tells you that that employee has a such and such effectable rate and the ideal pay rate for that employee should be this much. Got it. So we're about to, at the top of the hour here. Um, if somebody wants to learn more about Core, get a hold of you, what are the best ways to, to do that? So uh, bqe.com, um, if you forget that, remember Brooklyn Queens Expressway. Um, I grew up in New York, so though I will say that. Uh, bqe.com is the best way to find us. Uh, all the links to core trial, everything is in there. Uh, if they want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Shafat, S-H-A-F-A-T, as simple as that. And the same on Facebook. I would love to uh, chat with people if they want to learn more about or even want to test the AI and help us make it even smarter. So we understand we are a very inception, but we believe that we have something that might be more acceptable to the end users than, you know, the typical voice recognition systems that we have seen. 
Blake, did you have anything else additional to add on here or? Well, where should people uh, connect with you online, David? Oh, uh, I'm at David Leary. And, and, yourself. and I'm at Blake T. Oliver. Thank you so much, Shafat. And all, this, all our listeners, uh, subscribe to the Cloud Accounting Podcast. I should say all of our viewers, subscribe to the Cloud Accounting Podcast on uh, Apple uh, Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. We look forward to seeing you in person, Shafat. By the way, you have a great podcast. I was telling David that I've been listening to it from day one. And, you know, I, I can see things that will grow. And this is one of those things. So oh, um, so this is this is transforming both of you into journalists. So get prepared <laughs> for this. But uh, hats off. Wonderful job. Keep it up. Um, and I, I want to see it grow really, really big. We thank you so much need awesome. for that. That means a lot coming from you. And thank you. That, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye.